So we've made it to day 17 of my 28 day all access vlog. This episode, we're gonna check out the clean guard system. I'm gonna teach you how to identify and treat a dehydrated puppy. We're also gonna talk about coccidia, one of the number one killers to puppies, and the puppies are starting to walk. Day 17 and we're back in the whelping box. Stimulating bowels. We got surrogate mother Remy over here nursing. They just do not like to latch on June bug for nothing. I've never seen anything like it. I thought at first it was just because her milk wasn't coming in, but her milk's coming in better. It's not flowing really good, so that might be some of the problem still. And I think it's just her nipple type. She's got these really long nipples at the end and then these pancake ones at the top. I don't know. I'm thinking between her just low milk production and weird shaped nipples, they don't like latching on her. But I put them in here on Remy and they latch right on her right away. So Remy's been holding it down for us, thank God. I remember the other night when I was explaining hand bottoming and the many different reasons why it's more effective is because it gives you an insight to the puppy's health by being able to identify the poop. As I've been sitting here doing bowels, I've noticed that their poop is very watery. Very watery. So what's that tell me? The first thing that tells me, or could tell me, is if the poop's very watery, that means they're losing a lot of fluid, that means they could be dehydrated. Also, this puppy's staying really small He's got my radars on high alert. Doesn't mean there's necessarily something wrong. Sometimes they just stay smaller. Sometimes they don't gain as much fat early. Sometimes things just happen. They grow up, they're fine. Sometimes it's a problem and you wanna be able to identify it as quick as possible. So my radars have been up. I haven't seen anything crazy except for really watery poop he just gave me. After he gave me that really watery poop, I decided to check him to see if he was dehydrated. When I checked him to see if he's dehydrated, I feel like he is a little bit dehydrated. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him some fluids subcutaneously, probably about three mLs under the skin. I have a lactate ringer I'll pull from, and I'll subcutaneously give him three mLs of fluid up under the skin to help him hydrate. That's healthy poop. That's as close as you can get to pretty much healthy poop. It's gonna be kind of like mustard seeds. Orangish, brownish, brownish color with like little mustard looking seeds in there. That's healthy poop, that poop's fine. This pup is doing fine. So how do you tell if a puppy is dehydrated? Well, what you do is you pinch it you pinch its skin and you see how fast it recoils. You see how it's not really recoiling that fast, it's staying up in that pinched position, kinda, where, let's, we'll see, this one, see how that one's recoiling a lot faster than this guy? Nothing crazy but I think he might be a little dehydrated, so it can't hurt. We're gonna go ahead and shoot him up with some fluids. All right, so I got a lactate ringer here. Gonna take a fresh syringe, pull some fluids up out of here. All right, so we got about three mLs of fluid. We're just gonna put it into the puppy subcutaneously, under the skin, above the muscle.
All right, we got Junebug Staples removed. See if we can get these puppies to nurse on her. They do not like to nurse on Junebug for whatever reason. I put them right on Remy. They love Remy. I can get all three puppies to nurse in three seconds. Look at this. Look at this. Look, making milk. Even this guy, watch. He might, he might last for a little bit. But they really, they don't even want to latch on her. I don't get it. I've never had this issue. Never had puppies like this that just don't want to latch on their own mom. But I put them on a surrogate mom and they latch happily. Can't really figure this one out. Like I said, I don't know if it's the shape of her nipples. I don't know. Good thing I got Remy. And I'll continue to supplement feed also. But it sucks because her milk is so much more rich in the colostrum. You can see how much more yellow it is. Which has the antibodies that the puppies need for immunity. Especially this guy who I don't like how he's looking. He's just, just not putting on weight the way he should. Like that's how they should look. This guy looks completely different. Is he just going to be tiny and small? Maybe. You just never know. But my, um, my radar is on high alert right now. He's gaining weight. He's making, you know, 10 gram gains a day. But you can just see around his shoulders, hips, face. He's, he doesn't have that fat content like he should have. Gave him some fluids last night. Seemed a little dehydrated. Um, I gave them some propectolin this morning. This is what helped for diarrhea. I'll give them a little bit more here in a minute. You remember on episode one, when I said we're gonna get to find out if Junebug's a good mom or a bad mom? Junebug, come on. Come on, mama. Junebug, come on. I got some string cheese for you. I saved some string cheese, Junebug. Come on, girl. Oh, shit. Come on, Junebug. Come on, Junebug. All right, do you see how I cannot get these puppies to latch on her for nothing? These big two might. I'm not even really not too concerned about them. Okay, he did for a little bit, spit it out. He doesn't want to. This little guy, I even had it in his mouth for a little bit. The one that does with it. Watch this. I'm not even, no cut, no cuts. Watch this. I'm gonna be quick. Come on, Junebug. Come on, hurry up, no cuts, come on. Wait for it. Watch. Come on. Watch this. You guys ready for the countdown? All right, go. I can't figure this one out. Hit me up in the comments. What's going on here? Have you guys ever experienced this? They wanted nothing to do with Junebug or her milk. Look at how actively they are trying to nurse on Remy, who's not even their mother. Do they think she's the mother? Are her nipples shaped better? Is her milk flowing that much easier? Why are these dogs so into latching and nursing on Remy? Sweet Remy, who's not even their mother.
All right, so let's talk about what's going on here with this little cream boy. So the first thing I did was I identified his poop was watery, which led me to believe he could be dehydrated. So I checked for dehydration by pinching his neck. It didn't recoil as much as I'd like. So I assumed he's a little bit dehydrated. So I gave him some fluids subcutaneously. Also, I've noticed he looks wormy. What does wormy look like? He looks wormy. He looks like he's infested with parasites. Why? Because his hip bones are showing, his neck bones are showing, his skull area. He has less fat on his hip, skull, and neck area. And like um, what you would almost call a distended abdomen, where like the body is small, but the abdomen's big. So he's looking wormy to me. I've already hit him with pyrantal at two weeks. So what comes to mind is coccidia. Why coccidia? Because coccidia is, is a killer. Coccidia is very hard to get rid of, and coccidia can come back really easily. A fly can land on a piece of crap that's infected, fly into your house, land on the table, and pass that on, and pass on the coccidia that way. That simple, that easy. So no matter what you did, a simple house fly could bring it right back into your program. The other thing with coccidia is they say to truly kill it, hamburger, they say to truly kill, they say to truly kill coccidia, you have to use a 10% ammonia solution. Ammonia is very toxic to newborn puppies. So you don't wanna use ammonia around your newborn puppy. So for that reason, I'm thinking maybe he's got some coccidia going on. We would typically treat coccidia with Albon. Albon's like the number one coccidia treatment, but Albon's also the hardest med, at least for me, to get a hold of. I believe it's one of the harder meds to get a hold of. It doesn't, you have to keep it refrigerated. It doesn't have a long shelf life. You need a prescription. So there's many different reasons that Albon is a harder med to get a hold of. And right now I don't have any. What I do have is Tultrazuril. There's two other meds you can treat coccidia with. Tultrazuril and pon Ponzuril, Pons Ponzuril, something like that. Forgive me on these pronounced pronunciations. I'm not the best at that. So this is what I'm gonna treat him with, Tultrazuril. And I'm gonna do a five day treatment. Now when you put your puppy on Tultrazuril, you should give it a probiotic because it's really rough on their gut. So I'm also going to follow up with this probiotic, Propectolin, which is going to be a probiotic. It's a paste. This is like a probiotic paste. You've seen that I use this for diarrhea because it's a probiotic. It's good for the gut. It's also good for when you use an antibiotic or a medicine that's going to destroy a lot of that good bacteria, you wanna put good bacteria back in there. So you're gonna to wanna to follow up with a probiotic if you're using Tultrazuril. Because it's a newborn puppy, that's why I'm using Propectolin paste. If, if you're treating an adult puppy with Tultrazuril, you can use Fortiflora, you can put this in their food. This is a probiotic also. Like I said, I'm using this paste because it's a newborn puppy. So five days of Tultrazuril, five days of probiotic, and hopefully it's gonna knock out that coccidia. I'm also gonna treat the rest of the litter, the other two puppies. As you can see, they look great. They look amazing. It's gonna be a little bit different of a dose. The treatment dose of Tultrazuril is gonna be a higher dose than the prevention dose. So I'm gonna treat the small cream puppy with a treatment dose of Tultrazuril, but then I'm gonna also treat the other puppies with the prevention, a smaller dose. And as soon as I get done doing this five-day treatment of Tultrazuril, I'm going to put them right on Fenbendazole, safeguard. And then we're going to hit them with the safeguard for three to five days straight. So just in case maybe it's Giardia or some other kind of parasite, we're going to make sure we address that too.
get right to it. It gives you vibes of that other product with the two W. It is a very similar product, but I believe Clean Guard is more superior for many different reasons. It's 100% eco-friendly, it's biodegradable, it's safe on dogs, but it still kills viruses like parvo, canine herpes, disinfects and deodorizes all in one. And it's not a bleach smell. It's more of like a clean pool, fresh clean pool smell. Hamburger, as you can see, these two girls are in heat. So look out for that on next episode. We'll be breeding denim and hamburger Mary. The clean guard kit comes with this garden hose attachment. You have the canister down here with the filter. Pop off this canister. That's where you pop in your pods. Use as many as you need for however big of an area that you're and cleaning. I did two pods last time and they were definitely gone when I was finished. So I'll probably do three pods next time. It's got this on off switch right here and it's got this adjustable um, nozzle tip right here. So if you want like a, a more concentrated stream spray or like a wider mist, you can adjust that right here. It comes with this automatic rechargeable triggerless sprayer. That's right, triggerless. The trigger is what always breaks. So not having a trigger means this product's gonna last longer. It's automatic, you just point and go, which is gonna allow you to get in and out quick. You're gonna be able to clean a large area in a short amount of time with this sprayer. And then there's the size of the pods. This is what really sets Clean Guard apart and really makes it the more superior system. The size of these pods. You only use as many as you need and no more than you need. You're not committing to that big expensive pod like that other system. And I found many different uses for them. You can drop one pod right here in the sprayer and use this inside your house or inside your kennel. Use this in your whelping box, incubator. You can take one of these pods and put it in two gallons of water and you'll have two gallons of cleaning solution that you can bottle up if you really want to stretch it. Use again inside your whelping box, whelping room. Or you can just put one in this bottle and get a more heavy duty concentrated formula. And remember, it kills parvo. It kills canine herpes, which is really big. If, I don't know if some of you guys are probably like, what's he talking about, herpes? Canine herpes is huge. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a killer. If that gets near neonatal puppies, you lose whole litters. Um, so we gotta protect these dogs. And this is a product that's eco-friendly, easy to use, and it's gonna protect our dogs and keep them safe. So that's gonna give us peace of mind, which was really what's priceless. Easy to use because you can just spray it on and leave it. It's, fr it's, clean, it's safe on the dogs. The only reason to come back and rinse it off would be to eliminate that white, it leaves like a white film sometimes, but if it's on your turf, if it's in your kennel, you probably don't care about that. If you are gonna do that, let it sit for about five minutes. It's getting hot out here. I gotta wrap this up and get Mary inside. We are gonna rinse it off, let it sit for at least five minutes so it can do its job, then go ahead and rinse it off. But I recommend leaving it on because that's gonna give you that full deodorizing effect. That's the Clean Guard system. Check out the link in the description, cleanguard.com. Use code BBB for 10% off. As always, I make sure to get my audience a discount code. Hit that like button for me. The better these videos perform, the more motivated I am to keep dropping content and keep introducing you guys to new products. So that wraps up this episode. Next episode, we pick up on day 22. There's gonna be lots of surprises in store, like who's the lucky studs? We're gonna be progesterone testing the girls and talking about why progesterone testing is so important. And we'll be breeding Hamburger Mary and Denim.